Good morning and Namaskar. My name is Virat and it's an honor and a pleasure to be here sharing time and space with such a distinguished uh, audience. I'd like to keep my talk very informal and very um, participative. So request all of you guys to uh, participate along. Yeah? It also keeps you awake. I'd like to start off with a very simple question, an obvious question. And the question is, do you want to be successful? Yes, no? Yes. Now, as I said, it's an obvious question, right? Everybody out there wants to be successful. And no matter how you define success, you could have your own parameters of success. But everybody out there, from a toddler to a toy maker, from a housewife to an entrepreneur, uh, from a student to a teacher, everybody's looking for success. Interestingly, a lot of uh, human scientists out there, behavioral scientists and uh, psychologists, have been doing research to figure out what skills does one need to be successful, right? Stanford, along with some other institutes, uh, did a very interesting research. And they asked a lot of people, what skills do you need if you want to be successful? Let me pose the same question to you. What do you think? What skills do you need if you want to be successful? Got to be a little louder. Communication. Communication skills, great. Few more examples? Perseverance. Perseverance. Leadership. Leadership. So on and so forth. You know, similar answers come up. So, interestingly, in all those answers, uh, the first set of skills that came up is what they said is domain knowledge, meaning your technical knowledge or your academic knowledge. How much do you know about your subject? Right? That was one of the skills that came up. They primarily came up with two kinds of skills. Domain knowledge was one of them. And the second category of skills was what they call as soft skills, or people skills, or abstract skills, life skills. In fact, most of the answers that I generally get, I've asked this question to thousands of people across the planet. And the answers I typically get are what you said. Yeah. Interestingly, very few ever said education. Just pointing it out. So, so they figured that, and this is a no-brainer, right? This is obvious. Success depends on my technical knowledge, my domain knowledge, and it depends on soft skills. And soft skills are skills like communication skills and leadership skills, time management skills, yeah, uh, decision making ability, working in teams, uh, working under pressure, um, expressing your ideas, relating with people, so on and so forth. Then they took it one step forward and they asked another very interesting question. And this question was, in what proportion do you need these skills? Right? So how much percentage of your success would you attribute to domain knowledge or academic knowledge and how much percentage of your real life success would you attribute to soft skills and all these other skills? What's your guess? Guessing is free. More on, do more on domain or more on soft? More on soft, right? That was my gut feeling too and that's exactly the answers I've got every time I've asked this question. Interestingly, the researchers found the same trend. The research came out and pointed about 15% of real life success was dependent on domain expertise and about 85% was dependent on soft skills. Yeah. And they did a very interesting uh, reverse study to this research by Howard did this study. And they realized that 80% people who got fired in a job got fired because of lack of soft skills. Only 20% people out there were losing jobs because of lack of domain knowledge. I was speaking to a lot of HR people and they always say that it's easier to train somebody on domain knowledge than it is to, easy, than it is to train somebody on soft skills. So people tell me this, you are telling me this, this is my feeling, this is what research says, that soft skills is important. And the longer, uh, in the longer scheme of things, it becomes critical. Domain knowledge is important, of course, it is, it is necessary. But soft skills are equally or more important. What is interesting to note is that if you look at the typical education system, especially in India, if you look at time, effort, and money spent by students, of course, time, effort is yours, uh, money is your dad's. But if you look at percentage of time, effort, money spent on domain knowledge and soft skills, don't you think the equation is reversed? Isn't it? 
You look at a typical education system, a typical student, right? Most of his time, effort, money is spent on developing academic knowledge, right? Domain knowledge. Very little on soft skills, if at all. Let me ask you another question. And this question was not asked in the Stanford study. This is my um, individual question to you. We talk about these soft skills, right? So uh, communication skills, leadership skills, decision-making ability, all of this. Where does it come from? Right? A similar question to entrepreneurship. Where does it come from? Would you agree that it comes from within? Yes, no? Yes. Of course, training can be given. But a lot of these skills are born inside, right? They are, so to say, originate in the human mind. Right? Soft skills come from the mind. Where is concentration? It's in the mind. Where is confidence? It's in the mind. Where is lack of confidence? It's in the mind again, right? How much do we know about the mind? What do we know about the mind? When was the last time we were coached on how to deal with our mind? Never at school, not in college, not in the companies, uh, no programs on TV. Nobody really tells us, how do I deal with my mind? You know, there are certain rules, so to say, on how the mind works. Yeah? If you understand these rules, the process of life becomes simple. Yeah? Let me give you a very small example. Okay. In fact, let's do a very small um, process. Um, I'd request all of you for a brief moment to close your eyes. Don't worry, it's safe. Close your eyes. Close both your eyes. All right. And now, because we are so intelligent, empowered, educated individuals, you can think about anything in your mind right now, but do not think about pizza. Anything else is fine. Definitely not a cheese pizza with your favorite toppings. Anything else is fine. Do not think about a pizza. All right, open your eyes. What do you see? Pizza all over the place, right? Now, we sit here and smile at this, but this is exactly what we do on an everyday basis, right? I don't want to think about my boss. I don't want to think about my ex-girlfriend. Finished. What comes forward? Yeah, ex-girlfriends for some people. Right? Understand that a small tendency of the mind, in the realm of the mind, what you resist will persist. And the harder you resist it, the more it will persist. This is a small um, tendency of the mind. Like, there, like that, there are many more uh, rules and tendencies of the mind. And if you know how to deal with the mind, life definitely becomes simpler. So, so then, if I need to get to deal with my mind, what do I do? You can't deal with the mind from the level of the mind. You cannot tell your mind intellectually what to do and what not to do. And that's where I feel the softest skill of all comes into play. And that's meditation. Meditation gives you access to your mind like nothing else does. Yeah? And this I'm talking from my experience. When I was in college, I thought I knew it all. I was an engineer. And I thought my life is great, right? Meditation is for losers. Right? And then when I experienced the whole process of meditation, it made so much sense. Right? I've been meditating for about 10 years now. And it's added so much color to my life, so much uh, beauty to my life. Right? It's so easy to concentrate. It's so easy to perform better in whatever you're doing if you're meditating. And, and this is another thing. People seem to have a very outdated context of meditation. Right? You, you still feel that, oh, meditation means go to the Himalayas, shut yourself out, grow a beard. Right? It's not that. To me, meditation is something which gives you a competitive edge today. To me, meditation is what makes you a leader. It makes you a team player. Yeah? And the more um, you go out in the real world, I experienced this both as a student when I was doing my masters, and then when I was working in the corporate world, and then I had a little small stint of being an entrepreneur. I ran my own little company. Through my personal life, and through my professional life, and through my academic life, this was the thing which made all of them connect very beautifully. 
To me, meditation is what's going to differentiate the next breed of corporate leaders. I see the new age CEOs as meditating CEOs. Yeah. I see these new brand of corporate leaders or ambassadors of success going out there and achieving their material goals, of course, but not losing touch of that spiritual aspect of life, of walking that thin line in between which gives you the best of both the worlds. Right? To me, that's true success. Right? Where you have inner peace and outer dynamism. You're collected, centered inside, and then you go out there and make a difference in whatever field of impact you choose. But to me, that's critical. Right? The chain of thought I'm trying to build over here for you is that we say success is necessary and everybody is chasing success. And through our own life experiences and through whatever popular research is available out there, we are feeling more and more that success is a gray area and it's hugely dependent on um, attitude and soft skills and my own internal ability, um, as Sir pointed out, passion and uh, you know, what is it that I want to do and all of these collective life skills. And they seem to have an impact on success more and more. And these skills are definitely not in isolation um, by themselves. These skills are dependent on the human mind. Yeah? That's, that's the um, playground for these skills. Right? And the human mind is easiest to access and to train and to um, uh, become more effective, become more productive via the root of meditation. Yeah? It's something, another myth about meditation is um, it's something very difficult to do. It's something um, I need to uh, leave my regular activities and then pursue. That's not true. Yeah? Meditation is something which connects your life together. So the chain of thought is success, soft skills, soft skills, mind, mind, meditation. Yeah? And um, that's what I would like uh, you to try out. I would like to invite each one of you today to experience this aspect of your life. Yeah? This is what makes life holistic. In fact, this is what would probably make education holistic. We train our kids in schools for all the basics of life, right? Everybody learns computers. Everybody learns English. Everybody learns mathematics. Even if you're never going to really use English as a profession, you learn that language, right? No matter which, uh, whether you're an engineer or a doctor or an architect, you learn computers because the basis is that no matter what I do in my life, I will need to know computers. Agreed? Yes or no? It's the same basis. No matter what I do in my life, I will need to work with my mind. Yeah? And if I can incorporate that as a part of my learning process, then I'm more prepared to face the challenges that the world is going to offer me soon. Yeah? And to me, that is holistic. To me, that completes the circle of life. Yeah? And for that, you need to meditate. Yeah? So I would like to invite you uh, to experiment with this, to try this out for yourself, and to open up to this new dimension of life, which for some reason, although India is the birthplace of this process, um, we are the people who gave the world the gift of meditation and um, were so advanced in this particular aspect. Um, it is um, only sensible that we include this in the modern education and in the modern culture that we are kind of uh, cultivating. And you and I together are the, you know, torch bearers of this culture. And we're going to take India forward, right? So as much as uh, materialism is important, so is this little element of spirituality. What do you say? Make sense? Yes. Yeah? Cool. So I'd like to end with one of my favorite um, statements that I heard is that in order for me to open my eyes to this new world out there, the beautiful, the exciting, the challenging world out there, in order for me to go and open my eyes to that world, I need to close them first. In order for you to open your eyes truly, 
you need to first close them and take a dive deep within and you'll be amazed at how much there is in store for you to learn from and for you to enjoy. Yeah? Uh, I'd like to wrap up, thankfully before time. Have a great uh, day ahead, have a great life ahead and keep meditating, keep smiling, keep celebrating. Thank you.